when I think of vibration and frequency, I think in terms of energy. So the dream life that we each desire is like a certain kind of energy or a feeling. And I think each of us can connect with this feeling when we've been in a state of flow or when we've had something really beautiful happen to our lives where it just felt right and success came easily and not through hard work. And I think that's because in that moment, we were aligned with the frequency of our heart's greatest desire. And so the success came as a result of us being in that correct frequency. And so I think a lot of times, and I know I've done this so many times in my life, it's believing that I need to have success before I can be in that frequency. But I think it's actually the other way around. By mm. being in that frequency first, then that attracts the success that then perpetuates this good feeling of wanting to stay in that frequency. Hey guys, welcome back to The Push Podcast. I'm Janelle Copeland. And I'm Edward Copeland. And we have a very special guest today that we're gonna be introducing in just a second. Hopefully the title of this episode got you here, A Manual for Manifesting Your Dream Life. Very special guest I'm excited to talk to you guys about and share uh, share him with you. In the meantime, <laughs> Well, Do you yeah. have a wet in the world, oh, wait, Edward Copeland? Well, we have Eric Todd Campbell. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to say his name yet. You ruined Why? it. Oh, okay. All right, well. Well, guys, there. There, there you have it. <laughs> Eric John Campbell. Sorry. Sorry, I buddy. You, I didn't know you Now were... you may as well say hi, Eric. Hi. <laughs> hi, Eric. How's it going? Hey. <laughs> that was so anticlimactic. Let's I didn't try it again. know you were like doing the spontaneous thing. That, spontaneous you, not spontaneous but you were doing the, the uh suspense thing that's what i meant to say what yeah well okay clearly we're not on the same page however <laughs> rewinding um we dis i me me i did it okay. i found this awesome guy on tiktok who's been posting all of these excerpts from his book um that is coming out soon and i started kind of down a rabbit hole of reading all of them. And I was like, I gotta get this guy on the podcast and here's why. And then I'm gonna throw it over to you, Eric. But I found you because um, we believe in positivity. We believe in attracting what you put out into the universe. We believe that the universe has your back. And sometimes that seems pretty woo woo. And so people are like, well, what do you mean the universe has your back? And so I thought that you articulated it so well that I reached out to you. I asked you if one, we could be friends and two, if you would be a guest on the Push Podcast. So welcome to the Push Podcast, Eric John Campbell. How are you today? Oh, thank you. It's such an honor to be here. And I love the vibe between the two of you. And We're I crazy. can't wait to talk all about this because I really do think the universe has all of our back. Yeah, I love that. I and can mean, I just can I just explain something? Okay, go because ahead. you know you 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 use the term woo woo mm -hmm. often when you're talking about um, like mystical. Yeah, and and so I wanted to kind of break that down. When we say woo woo, we're t we're talking about things that um, could be can feel like it's mystical, can feel godly, can feel like the divine, can feel like like those are things that I think a lot of people don't invest a lot of time in thinking about. And so when they hear things about like what Eric's going to talk about, um, they may walk away going, is that magic? Are you talking about right. magic? Well, no, we're not, talking about magic. Yeah. <laughs> we're not talking about magic. We're not talking about magic. I do think it's something. magic. Well, it's magical, but I'm not, it's not like, you know. Maybe that's the wrong word. Yeah. It's what not would like you a, consider it, Eric? <laughs> like when, when we are talking about the universe delivering, I'm, I think it's all up to interpretation. If you use crazy words and you add like a soundtrack of like something mystical, then yeah, it sounds weird as shit, right? But what would you describe like when you say, you know, hey, we're asking people to trust in the universe and use their energy and their vibrations and their frequency. Um, when you talk to people, sometimes do they get a little weirded out by that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it definitely depends who I'm talking to. Some people love the conversation and some people find it really unusual. And I understand both sides because I feel like I've been in both sides myself. But to me, it definitely feels like something that each person can look to their own life experiences. And rather than take somebody else's word for it or immediately say, this is crazy, it's not for me, just try some simple things in your own life and then see the response that you get. And it's going to be really magical. Mm. Yeah. 
Great yeah. answer. So you had, uh, you've been teaching business courses, entrepreneurship, you have a business background. And then when you were 24, 25, you had this spiritual awakening where you were called for something greater. And, and then what happened? Did you start researching like how to be a better person, how to find alignment? Cause I know we had talked before that you were just kind of out of balance, right? Yeah. So I definitely was very much on the business side growing up. And growing up, I was always into spiritual books and business books, but I was leaning way more towards the business and I didn't know why, but it would just felt like this feels right. And the spiritual stuff felt too woo woo for me. It didn't feel grounded or practical. So I was interested, but when I read those spiritual books, it was always kind of within arm's distance. Like this doesn't apply to my life now, but I think it's really fun to learn about. Mm. But the business was like, okay, I actually can see results. I'm creating something in the real world. I can change things based on feedback that I get from customers. And that got me really excited. So that's what got me really into the business world at first. But over time, I was just so lasered into the business that I was working all the time that it didn't feel holistic and I wasn't happy doing it. Yeah. Hmm. And so, you know, what's interesting is uh, Janelle found you on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. And on TikTok, uh, you're, you're outlining your book, which is, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, what made you want to start spreading that and like sharing, you know, the awakening that you had? Oh, so the idea of the book, which I'm so excited about is where your focus goes, your energy flows, which I think a lot of us have heard, but I noticed that it's becoming more and more popular as people begin to realize the power of their own attention. And just the fact that people are listening to this podcast right now, instead of choosing to listen to say the news or watch a show that's filled with maybe a lot of drama, it changes your perspective. Like I feel like as people listen to this, they may be growing and expanding their mindset. And it's like eating healthy food. Like it mm -hmm. really does make a difference in how we go through our day-to-day -day life, depending on where we place our attention. Wow. Yeah, I love that. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And so like we were talking about before we, we started, we do a what in the world segment, Eric. And oh, so, you're going back to this? Well, because <laughs> it's, it's customary and, and, and our people, the, the, our pushers out there who listen to push podcast, they expect us okay. to bring this out. Let's go. So you mentioned something about like, instead of, you know, they decided to listen to the push podcast, which we're really happy about instead mm -hmm. of watching a, a show full of drama, but mm -hmm. We, we, we are watching this show called Nine Perfect Strangers, mm. right? And, you know, it's very woo woo. It's very woo woo. It's, it's really about these people are going to this retreat um, because they've got some deep, deep seated problems in their life. They want to uh, Whether they've awakening. lost someone, whether they've just had just a miserable a time, a, 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 crumbled, a crumbled career, a relationship falling apart. And so what's interesting is that my what in the world is. And I'm not giving up the show because I think you, 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 people who want to listen to watch it, they'll still watch it. But there's a part where they start microdosing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they start taking drugs. I, I guess it's like psychedelics. Right. LSD. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, is this normal? Like, I know that there are many camps that say, yeah, psychedelics kind of subdue the ego, but it makes it look like they're having too much fun. It doesn't like they're solving like, their problems. And so I'm thinking to myself, what in the world is this show about? Like, if, if, is it showing that people need to just take drugs to get rid of their problems? Um, first of all, the Push Podcast does not suggest or condone <laughs> drug usage. I'm going to say that. Maybe Eric, Eric does. You condone <laughs> drug use. No, uh, just don't throw Eric in the mix of this. <laughs> um, but it is a good show. I will just tell you to go watch Nine Perfect Strangers. Usually, Eric, I don't know if you watch any TV, but this seems like a show that you would like. Like, there's a, a guru that's helping them. You know, they're all there for some sort of spiritual rebirth or reawakening because... They've had trauma right. and experienced, you know, things that have set them back and now they're carrying around all this baggage. So it's right up our alley, but we've only watched a couple episodes and um, I don't think you should talk about it anymore because <laughs> you would give the show away. Okay, I will. I, but I, I highly I, suggest you watch it and then you can text us, Eric, and the <laughs> listeners and let us know, like, would you go to a retreat and let them drug you and, like, you know, walk around on psychedelics? I feel like I have too much like trauma and like back stuff that I don't know just, what I would be would doing. Erupt. It would be, it would be bad. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that was my little commercial uh, for that because I thought that was uh, pretty crazy. But back back to Eric. Back to stuff. Eric. I <laughs> want to read something from your book, which is um, I think one of the the ways that I found you. And so I want to read it to you, and then maybe you can help us elaborate on it, and let's just have some discussion about it. So the universe always gives you exactly what you need to live a life that's aligned with the frequency of what you focus the majority of your attention on. It's essential that you become clear on your heart's desire, focus as much of your attention as possible on it, and courageously open yourself up to whatever wants to come into your life. So first of all, congrats. You're an author. I love that. And I love watching people succeed. But more importantly, I love watching people take their experiences and share them with the world. So thank you for this. I want to go to the first sentence. The universe always gives you exactly what you need to live a life that's aligned with the frequency of what you focus the majority of your attention on. Eric, can you tell the people that this does not say whatever you want, the universe is going to give you? Because that's (laughs) not what we're saying, right? You literally say that it has to be aligned with the frequency of what the majority of your attention is focused on. That's very clear. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think it's pretty moving. Thank you. I think that's a great point because I do see a lot of comments and like people saying, I tried this, but I didn't win the lottery. Like what's going on? It's not working for me. Yeah. And I understand that perspective, but I can only speak to my own experience. But what this means in my personal life is when I focus my attention on what I want, it doesn't mean that I expect someone to randomly deposit like this money in my bank account so I can just do it out of nowhere. But it means that it changes the energy, like the way energy flows through my body. And I'll naturally be more inspired to do healthy actions. And all of a sudden, I may be inspired to take a move forward, say, posting something on TikTok. And I know that that inspiration wouldn't have come to me if I wasn't focusing my attention on the end goal that I'm moving towards. Mm. Mm. That, that's huge. And, and, you know, one of the things that when we were looking at that, this, this, this excerpt, um, we were looking at the word frequency, right? And so, uh, you know, we were talking about, we're going to have to break that down a little bit for the audience from a standpoint of what is frequency. And so when you, as an author, write that, um, what is your definition of fre- frequency in, in, when it comes to this context? Yeah, that's a really great question. I was actually thinking about that earlier today. And I saw something, a quote from Albert Einstein, and I don't know the exact quote, but he was saying, it's all energy. Like essentially the world that we live in is energy. And I believe science is starting to make this more clear as it progresses. And so when I think of vibration and frequency, I think in terms of energy. So the dream life that we each desire is like a certain kind of energy or a feeling. And I think each of us can connect with this feeling when we've been in a state of flow or when we've had something really beautiful happen to our lives where it just felt right and success came easily and not through hard work. And I think that's because in that moment, we were aligned with the frequency of our heart's greatest desire. And so the success came as a result of us being in that correct frequency. And so I think a lot of times, and I know I've done this so many times in my life, it's believing that I need to have success before I can be in that frequency. But I think it's actually the other way around. By Mm being in that frequency first, then that attracts the success that then perpetuates this good feeling of wanting to stay in that frequency. I love that. So let me get this straight. I, Janelle, let's just say I'm struggling financially, uh, struggling to make ends meet. I've got a ton of debt and my credit's jacked up. I really want a beach house. And if I focus all my intention on wanting, wanting, wanting that beach house, do you mean to tell me that the beach house will not magically appear? But I think what I hear you saying is that if I really want this beach house and I start to shift all my energy, my attention, my focus over to, you know, how can I acquire this beach house? then I would think of a plan like, okay, well, first I got to get my money situation together. So let me take action and maybe read a book on money. Let me figure out how to clean up my credit. Let me figure out how to establish a savings account. Let me. So that's what you mean by like all of the, the frequency and the energy has to go into the thing that you're trying to create. Are we, are we clear on that? Is that right? Yeah, that's a great point. And one quick thing I would add is 
in that case, the beach house is a symbol, I think, of the feeling that you desire. So there's mm. this feeling that mm. this person wants when they say, I want a beach house. And so connecting with that feeling, I think will make it happen even faster. And it'll be easier so, to have the motivation. That's great. I, I so that. like, I yep. want the feeling because I feel like if you own a multi-million dollar beach house, then you're successful. You've done some things right. You've got your money in order. You're absolutely right. It's not necessarily the beach house. It's the feeling that's attached to all of that. Yeah, and, I, and I'll just add, because I think that, that that's important, and I hope that people are catching that, because we, we, we tie like materialistic things to like important visions and goals and feelings that we want to have in, mm -hmm. in, a, in, in our lives. And then when we get that materialistic thing that we want, we go, oh, Huh. I'm still the same person. Yeah. So I, like I didn't, it didn't change anything. But I think when you, when if you, you know, Eric, when I think what I hear from you saying is that when you clearly define what that feeling will be, then you can be that now, um, and then that that's going to be something that's going to help you manifest that. But for those people that are listening right now, the cynics out there, because that's who we got to, that's the people that we really want to speak to, because we got to get them to really understand this a little bit more is I, th I think what Eric is saying and what I tend to believe is if you don't understand the energy thought, thought process and you don't, don't understand the frequency, if you've ever had someone walk in a room and they're in a bad mood mm -hmm. or they have a bad attitude, you don't even have to directly in, in, interact with that person. You feel it. You feel your energy drain. Right? You feel that person like there's something from, about this person that makes me want to stay away. Mm -hmm. It's because of their energy. And that is the energy that we all carry, whether it be good or bad, but that's also the energy that we carry towards the things that we're trying to accomplish, right? Yeah. So I just I wanted to make sure, because I just want to break it down so that people can see it in a, in a practical sense, because I'm sure everyone said, that person's got a bad attitude. You, you haven't said a word to them because you just could feel it, right? Yeah. So that's, that's powerful. And I think frequency can be like, you know, if we were talking about getting a Tesla right now because we want another electric car, every time I'm driving down the street, all I see is Teslas because my focus is on that subconsciously. And, you know, I'm starting to kind of attract those. So that's what I see. And I'm sure all of our listeners can like remember a time where you either wanted a dream car right. or you were getting ready to you know, have a baby and all of a sudden every woman you see is pregnant, right? So th that's what I think of when I think of like the frequency. Mm. Are we on the right path, Eric? Yeah, I think those are beautiful points. And one thing I feel called to share right now, just a personal example for my own life to kind of point why it's so important to focus on the feeling and not the item is back when I was teaching business courses, I had this incredibly strong desire to have a really successful online teaching business focus around business. So if I had gotten that, which is the object, then I don't think I would be happy. Mm -hmm. Whereas the feeling is what I got, but the universe had a different plan for me about what the manifestation of that feeling is gonna be. Yeah. And you know, and break that down because I think when people go to see your your TikTok and they and they read your book, you speak about the universe uh, quite frequently. Like, how do you define that? Like, what is the universe for you? That's such a great question, and I think it's something that can't be contained in words. It's something that just is, but can only be pointed towards. But one big shift that I feel is huge in my own life that I also feel called to share in this moment is it feels like my whole life switched when I had things are happening to me to things are happening for me. Mm -hmm. And when I made that shift, the universe sounded so much more friendly. And for some reason, that's why I like saying it so much now or writing about the universe, because it feels like it really does have my back. Like this is a benevolent universe here to support me and to support us all. So I think people are thinking to themselves, because again, the cynics that maybe have not done the work that you've done, they're saying, well, the universe had to have opened up some sort of opportunity or given him something for him to be so graciously appreciative now, right? So um, does, this doesn't mean though that your life is not complicated or problem free. It just means what? Are you looking at those problems differently or what? Are you not experiencing problems anymore? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a great point. I definitely wouldn't say my problems have gone away. <laughs> if anything, maybe I have more problems now or I'm more aware of the problems that I'm facing. 
but it's just a shift in perspective that's so empowering. So I look at more as opportunities and challenges rather than problems now. And then when I'm faced with something, it's not like, oh, I'm so frustrated that this person did this to me. It's more of an inquiry like, oh, why did this person do this to me? Why did I attract that? And what's a lesson that I can learn from it? Mm -hmm. And I just, I find it so fun. Like we're always growing and I think we naturally love to grow. And so instead of seeing these daily frustrations as just inconveniences that get in the way of our otherwise happy life, I see them as part of the life itself, like the journey that we're on to grow. Hmm. Yeah, I, so I, I love that so much because I think just going back to what we just read about frequency, I think that perspective and that type of outlook is what maintains a high frequency, mm -hmm. right? Because we all face the problems and, and for many people, the problems are drainers, right? Mm -hmm. They deal with problems all day long and it drains them and drains them and drains them. And I heard this quote where it said that um, some people look, uh, chase storms, I chase problems, right? And, and it was, it hit me. And, and the reason why it hit me is because this person's outlook was like, I look for the things to fix. I look for the things to solve for, because I know that my goal is to help. My goal is to serve. And in order for me to serve, I gotta be looking for the problems that are out there that people face. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a powerful, powerful thing that some people chase storms, I chase problems. But that was amazing. Yeah, I think most people though don't wanna chase a storm and they don't wanna chase a problem though. They're looking to live a very problem-free life because the bulk of the people that I interact with, especially, you know, beginner business owners is like, can I just get a pass every now and then? Why does everything have to be so complicated? If it's not one thing, it's another. It's just like constant, like your problems are almost like waiting in line on like an escalator that never stops, right? So some people view the world like that. And then there's, you know, an eternal optimist like Eddie. And then Eric, every time you open your mouth to speak, it sounds like you're smiling. So I'm going to assume <laughs> that you are also an optimist. But for the people that I interact with on a daily basis, I feel like it's an escalator of problems. And what do we say to people like that that are like, well, hey, I tuned in because this is a manual for manifesting your dream life. And, you know, I'm not as happy and I'm not wanting to welcome the problems in or chase the storms. So how, just tell me now, how do I build my dream life? Right. Yeah, so, I mean, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think that's a really great point And mm. one that I feel like I can understand where if someone's energy is being drained all the time and it just feels like life is not working, everything seems to be sucking your energy. And then to have someone tell you, like, look at these things that are sucking your energy as a positive thing. I mean, I would find that so frustrating. <laughs> Okay, good. So, so what do you do? I mean, if I'm sure you come into contact with people and they're like, okay, well, he's so positive. It's so great. But you know, my, my husband was diagnosed with cancer and I lost my job and because there is no doubt that, you know, unfortunate things are going to happen to you in life. So what do you just say to someone then in that case? Cause you don't want to tell them, well, Hey, your energy must've attracted this. And, um, you know, your frequency, if you just change your frequency, it'll get better. What do you say to people like that? Yeah, that's a great question. The first thing I always say is, I don't think I have the answers for anybody. Like whatever I write, I don't see it as a universal truth. I think if someone sees something in it that speaks to them, it's something that's already living within them that they're meant to hear in that moment. So when someone's going through tough situations in life, I'm not gonna tell them, here's what you do to get out of it because the truth is I have no idea. The only <laughs> person I can speak for is my own life experience. But one thing that I'm feeling called to share that comes up is when I was younger around the teenage years, I used to always, this is, maybe this is a kind of a, too much of a stretch of an example and it's not super related, but I used to always eat junk food and I didn't realize how it was making my body feel. I felt mm -hmm. lethargic and tired all the time, but I had no desire to eat healthy food. But then I started eating healthy food because someone recommended it, I'm pretty sure. And then I felt so good afterwards that I never went back to eating junk food, but it wasn't mm -hmm. a discipline thing. It was because I started to become more mindful of what was making me feel low energy and realizing that I do have a choice in making a different decision to something that could give me more energy. 
you know what's which is exactly (laughs) what we're talking about here though i don't want to miss that point is that yes things may be happening to you but are you giving all of your energy to the negative and can you kind of reframe it um which is what i think the gift is that you just gave was like when i tried something different it felt much better and i think that that would be my advice to someone that's going through a really tough struggle is just like okay sit with it you know kind of it may not be your season, but what could we try on that might feel a little bit different? Um, because m- maybe you need new tools in your tool belt. Maybe you need to explore healthy eating or just something different to make yourself feel differently and maybe attract a different frequency. Well, you know, the, the, and I think what's the reason why that's so relevant, Eric, is because, you know, more times than not, people can't get past the pleasure of the moment to even think about the ultimate benefits of something else mm-hmm. right and so sometimes junk food is so pleasurable for the the moment that they'll they'll betray themselves in a sense where they'll they'll give in to what's good now instead of what's good for them for the long run right and not even what's good for them but what's good to them for in in the moment and i think about that in a lot of different ways not just for food but i think about that when it comes to people and how they deal with problems um, and how people commiserate, right? Mm-hmm. So I have a problem. My problem sucks. I can't wait to share my problem with mm-hmm. you so that we can both share our problems. And that feels good because there's a connection. But at the same time, we have no idea that how it's impacting us. And, and to use your, your, the word you used, Eric, the frequency that it's bringing. Right. Because now we've centered our, our entire relationship awful awful conversations that have nothing to do with the positive and so i think that that's just that that example is is shown in a lot of different places well you know to your gossipy kind of like commiserating example eric wrote this in his book whatever you focus your attention whatever you focus your attention on will grow and so if i'm you know, arguing with a friend or having marital issues and I keep sharing those marital issues and repeating them over and over to all of my friends kind of gossiping, guess what happens? The resentment I have towards my husband or my partner continues to grow and fester. That's a hard thing for people to handle. Yeah, but that's the truth. And I think that that's really what you're saying here is that wherever your attention goes, then that energy will continue to create itself and amplify or multiply, right? Yeah. So it's more like a reframe, I think, is what Eric is saying. Yeah, and I would say, too, it's also a balance, like anything in life, where I think I've seen this in my own life, where I've done this for periods of time, where I just said, everything's great. Like, I have no problems. I've not gonna let problems enter my field of awareness but it got to the point where it's denial and Mm -hmm. denying those more negative things actually makes them grow bigger it doesn't make them go away but at the same time in the complete opposite direction if it's only focusing on the negative then like you mentioned we kind of it can get caught in these cycles of like fueling that negativity so i do think there's like a middle ground somewhere where it's acknowledging bad things as unwanted things, unpleasant, but also choosing if possible to frame it in a more optimistic light. I love wow. that. Yeah. So how do you help someone with that? I mean, I know that it, it's not easy to, to, to navigate you know, you, those types of, that type of intellect. How do you help someone with that balance? Yeah, that's a great question. And I honestly think that there's not much that someone can necessarily do to help someone else that person has to make the choice of how they want to live their life. And I think someone can help show potential by living, like being a living example of what choosing those things, more optimistic outlook is in a balanced and healthy way. But ultimately that person can't get the other person to make a similar choice. They can only inspire someone to make that choice for themselves. I mean, it's a good answer. I keep hearing Eric say, if you want to live a fucked up life, that's your fault. And I can't really help you. Right. And and to a certain extent, it's absolutely true, though. Like we when we first started going through our personal development journey, we were like reading books and, you know, learning about all of this stuff, law of attraction. And we were like, why didn't anyone tell us this? And so then we found ourselves kind of trying to, you know, cram it down other people's throats. 
But the, the point is, is like, unless they're ready and they're seeking that information and they're ready to change with open arms and like, you know, open to um, the ways that you're trying to tell them they should change, they're not going to change. Right. And that's what you're saying. And I think it sounds really powerful because you're like, listen, I wrote this book and it's about, you know, energy and frequency and every problem I throw at you, you're like, well, you know, I'm not really here to solve that for them. They've got to solve it for themselves. They've got to decide that they want to operate at a different frequency. Like other people have to decide that maybe if that doesn't feel good, you try something else on. And I love that. Yeah. Basically, it's not your problem, right, Eric? <laughs> well, one thing I would add to that is I would tie it back to what we were talking about earlier about the universe has our back. And I truly believe that. And it's not that one other person has my back. And if I'm out of line, they're going to fix me or like put me back on course. I think each of us are attracting circumstances that are giving us the potential to grow and choose a higher path at all times, but it's up to us to make that choice. So mm. really, I don't think anyone is left in the dusk. I think the universe has everyone's back and is always there. You know. That's well, great. I, I, you just got to tell my brother that. I think that he needs to know that I'm just joking. <laughs> he needs to know that the universe has his back. I kind of want him to say that again. He basically said that every person is attracting different opportunities. Yeah. Right? To yeah. get better, to grow from, to learn from. But how you sh choose to kind of maneuver through those opportunities and what you do with them is really up to you. That's what you said. Something like that. Right. That's what I got. Yeah. And, and, and Eric, can you tell me because I, I think that's good because you said that you woke up one morning and had that awakening. I mean, I think that there may have been things that you, know, you encounter, encountered that led up to it. But tell us a little bit about your kind of awakening. And, and, and I know that you were in another country when this happened. Yeah, so I'd be happy to share that. But just to give some context, I was in the business world, but like very frustrated. I kept starting these businesses, but it felt like whatever I did, I'd make just enough money to survive, but never enough to thrive. So I was always in this like stressful survival mindset. And I had started my first business when I was 13 and went to school for it. And it was just, I became like workaholic. So I thought eventually I'm going to crack this code and be free from my money problem is how I saw it. If only I work hard enough. And I didn't realize at the time how much pressure I was putting on myself, but it was like this pressure was building, this pressure was building. And for me personally, this was what happened to me when I went to bed in Prague when I was about 24, just nearly turning 25. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I had this spiritual awakening experience that completely changed my worldview. And I realized in hindsight that all of those stressful businesses that didn't take off were actually happening for me to help me get aligned with what I feel I'm truly called to do, which is to be an author. But at the time, I was so angry with the universe. I was so frustrated, so heartbroken. And I really did feel like a complete victim. Like no matter how hard I work, I can't seem to break this glass ceiling. But in hindsight, I realized that was actually happening for me, even though I thought it was the exact opposite that was happening to me. Mm. Wow. You said something the other day when we were talking about your business. You said success isn't something you work for. It's something you attract. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. So this is another one where I'd say it's dependent on each person's personal view. Because for some people, if they're not working hard, maybe the solution is to work harder. Or if they're feeling more called to do like lounge around, but discipline would help them. But for me personally, I was way in the discipline side and it was out of balance. I wasn't balancing that with surrender to what the universe had in store for me and the universe's plan. And so I only truly found my way when I backed off that kind of like grind hustle mentality that I thought was the only way to success and realized that there's another way if I'm willing to let go, which was actually a lot harder for me than just putting more effort in like that was easy for me personally putting all that willpower in was like the easy way out but it wasn't the true way mm. yeah can you help us with this something because here's what I'm, I'm thinking people may be hearing you say calling 
And I, and I think it's important to make a distinction between a calling and a craving, because I think people may say <laughs> the, those Doritos in there have been calling me all afternoon and I finally answered the call, but that's not a calling. Can you tell us a little bit, what's the difference? Because <laughs> I think that's important. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really great point. <laughs> For me personally, it was like the craving was to start a new business. The craving was to learn the next get rich quick scheme and try to go down that path. But the calling was this deep feeling inside of me that just knew that this isn't right for me. Like, even though I felt a strong like energy in this direction, like I wanted to make things happen. It was coming from this like fearful place where I could feel it more in my head, in my mind. But the calling is for me personally, more of this gentle undercurrent that just kept letting me know in very soft ways that maybe there's a different way for you. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that um, that's powerful because I think if people understand the distinctions between the two, uh, it will help them with ultimately fulfillment because that's what we really want in, in our lives, right? We want our lives to be meaningful. We want it to matter. We want to be fulfilled. Uh, and a lot of times our cravings um, will give us a false sense of that, right? And and before you know it, uh, we have gotten ourselves in, into a place where we're overworked and we're tired and, and we're, you know, resentful. Uh, and instead of feeling the, the what we really want to feel, and that's to feel joy, right? And so um, can you, you also talked about, we and we were offline, we were talking about uh, uh, being like one and being centered. Uh, and I think that to me has something to do with the calling. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what does it mean to be centered? Yeah, I'd love to share that. One quick thing I want to add to, to the earlier point was something about the calling. Actually, I'm kind of blanking on it now, to be honest, what I was going to say. So I'll just go. That's all good. We'll cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, for the centered bit, I noticed for me personally, it's the word intuition that word points to my path and whenever I'm stuck and I don't know which way to go, I sit in my own energy without any outside voices and I go within until it feels clear to me what my next step is. But I don't necessarily think that that's everyone's center at all. I think each of us has to find that place within ourselves where we can return to and feel safe and feel like there's this foundation that we can always return to whenever life feels a little bit overwhelming. But I don't think anyone can take you there. They can only point the way. And each of us has our own center. That can't mm -hmm. really be put into words, but it's there. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's huge. And you can't, you're definitely not gonna find your, cin your center just hanging out on social media. So I think you, you, if you all didn't catch that, Eric said, you gotta go within. So that means you gotta you know, put stuff down and get quiet. Yeah, I, I know I feel like the cynic and I get a lot of this. And I, the reason I think I love this conversation is because I believe, you know, exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it work in my life. But I feel like when we tell people like, you know, oh, hard work isn't success isn't something you work hard for. Instead, like listen to your inner tuition. I feel like people are like, yeah, my inner tuition told me to sleep in today. But if I didn't then I wouldn't have got any, or if I would have, I wouldn't have got any work done, you mm -hmm. know? Or my gut is telling me that I'm working too hard, yet my business isn't, you know, making the money that it, it needs to make in order for me to take a damn vacation or a day off, right? right? And so I think if you are struggling listening to this, I think you've got to go back, um, hit rewind and listen again, because the whole conversation, I think, is about that there's no one right path for everyone. I think there's there's several right paths for each person though, right? Yeah. And so, it, yeah. so you had said something when we spoke the other day and that was just like, I think we're just supposed to connect the dots, right? Yeah. So there's this business, I put my heart and soul in and it just wasn't working, but I know with hand over my heart that I did everything that I could at that time with the knowledge that I had. And so I pivoted and I went to the next thing because there was another opportunity, right? So I think that we have to understand that that is still the right path, even if the business didn't work out, even if the marriage didn't work out, even if the relationship didn't work out, it's not to say you're on the wrong path or you made a wrong turn. I have a girlfriend who just got out of a relationship that 
was like a year and she's obviously broken hearted and she's like, well, I just wish that it would have never happened because then I wouldn't be sad today. And so people often live this life thinking that they're making all these wrong turns right. and like the universe is smacking you on your hand saying, nope, that's not for you. Go back. And and it's just it can get confusing. Do you agree? It's a really great point. And what it made me think of is what we were talking about earlier about this belief whether or not you think the universe has your back and i think that's a piece of faith where there has to be some belief that this is all going to make sense in the future otherwise it can feel like life is just turning us around or personally i felt like i was making all these mistakes like if only i made the right choices and didn't make the wrong ones right. i would be where i want to be but i really think that in time when we look back it's easier to connect the dots than it is looking forward, which is from the video that I was talking about, which is Steve Jobs commencement address, which is one of my favorite videos of all time. And he was just saying, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. And I think that goes so well with this idea that the universe has your back, but often we just can't see it in the moment. Mm. Yeah. So and I heard faith and I hear surrender. Like you've got to know that it is all working out for you, but you won't, it won't make sense. The kind of connect the dots picture won't make sense until you're further removed from it. Right. So it has to kind of unfold and then you can look back. Like, did you make those um, connect the dots pictures in elementary school? I know I did. And it's like you start and you're like, you're looking at a bunch of dots on a paper. It's a perfect analogy. And you're like, this is nothing. Like, it's just right. a bunch of dots. And then when you start to do it, you maybe can see that it's starting to form. But once you've connected all the dots, you're like, boom, that's a parrot. Like yeah. it's a clear <laughs> apparent parrot, right? You can see the picture so clearly. And I think Eric, that it's a great analogy for what you're saying. Like you won't know, um, you won't see the evidence that you did make all the right decisions and all the right turns and that it will work out until after you've already healed from it, after yeah. you've already And people don't even realize that they, that, that they, the fact that they started the, the, the you know, the connected dot that created the parrot, that, was an exercise of faith because you you had to had some type of faith mm -hmm. to even start right and yeah. i think it's interesting and, and, and eric you could you probably have interacted with folks like this but it's interesting how people are hope adverse like like they they don't want to have hope because they don't want to be let down and so what you're talking about is is in a sense like hope and faith and like how do you help someone with that because i think and when I, when I mean by help someone i mean even through your writing like what would you tell someone to point them in the right direction when it comes to like it's okay have some hope have some faith mm -hmm. that's a really great point personally what i draw a lot of inspiration from is films and movies and i find in most movies there seems to be an arc where the character seems like everything has gone wrong. Like they're just completely stranded. There's no way that the audience can see a way for them to make it through. But if they keep the faith, then it's like something almost seems to come out of nowhere and then things shift for them. And yeah. I do find that watching films reminds me that that has happened before in my life in certain areas where I just couldn't see a way through, but somehow I'm here today. And I think we can all look back and have experiences where we were like, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. Like, I really can't see a way through. The stress is too high. It just seems like life is against me. And yet, if you're listening to this, you're alive and you're here now and you made it through. Yeah. And you have survived 100% of all of your bad days, right? Otherwise, so, you wouldn't be listening to this. Right. <laughs> well, I love so, that. And if you were to like to leave our audience with something like, uh, anything like anything that whether it be from your writing or whatever it may be that you think that that you're called to, to, to communicate, what would that be? That's beautiful. I really just feel like I want to congratulate each person listening to this on how far they've come on their journey. And like, I love each person that's listening to this so much and love you too and giving me this opportunity. And I just wish earlier on that I acknowledged how far I'd come mm -hmm. along certain points in my journey. And I really want to share with everyone that you're doing such an amazing job. And even if we can't see that in the day to day, like what you're doing is incredible and you've made it so far. 
and just like, I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. I love That's it. Great. And so a manual for manifesting your dream life comes out when and how can people get it and go support you? Can you let us know that? And then we want to tell them where to follow you as well. Um, beautiful. Thank you. It's estimated that I'll complete the digital version October 1st and then start shipping out paperbacks on October 15th. And you can find out and pre-order it and get early access on my website, which is just my name, ericjohncampbell.com. And once those paperbacks start shipping, I'll also have it on Amazon. I love it. Well, we're going to order five of them for our listeners and we're going to send them out. Um, and they're only going to be for people who are ready to start manifesting some good shit in their life <laughs> and stop talking about and harboring over all of the negative stuff that right. keeps piling up in your life because you're just going to manifest more of that. And so if you're really ready to draw a line in the sand and you're like, okay, what I'm doing isn't quite working, I'm going to give something else a shot, then I want you to leave a review um, for the Push Podcast. I want you to let us know like what about this episode really hit you and how you plan on putting a more positive spin on things or making some sort of declaration to move on after listening to Eric John Campbell share all of his wisdom with us today. So head over, leave a review, and then go follow John or Eric John Campbell on TikTok. Is that your, that's your account on TikTok, right? Yep, you got it. Just my yep. full name. I'm a fan and I liked about a hundred of your videos today and I'm going to continue to support you. And so I want to ship out five of these books. Um, so if you're ready to make a change, then head over to iTunes. You could even DM us um, at Janelle Copeland, Cope with Eddie. I just want to know what you got from this and how you plan on changing the frequency that you are operating at um, in the universe right now, because we need a higher frequency from our push I listeners. Would I, you agree? When you said that I heard the sound of frequency, like you need sound effects. We have yeah. no sound effects here at the Push Podcast. But um, Eric, thank you so thank much you for so joining much, yeah. us, for spending your time. It was such a gift, and I look forward to continuing to connect with you and watching you thrive and step into this next chapter of you know being an author and i hope that it brings you all of your heart's desires and just so much contentment so thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with our listeners today thank you so much it's been an honor i really appreciate it thank you awesome all right we'll see you guys in the next episode yeah. bye push through